Hello again, booktube. I thought I would start off today's review, or this week's review, <clears throat> or actually catch up, by showing you a stack of books like a couple bookstagrammers are so good at doing, and booktubers of the books I'm going to be talking about. Some of them anyway. So hopefully this will be a shorter catch up um, because of my library haul video, but I just wanted to talk about a few books. I, I don't know if I finished this since the last time um, that I recorded, but uh, I think this is on the, it might be the Booker International long list. I don't, I don't think it's the women's prize, but nevertheless, um, this is Boulder by Eva Baltazar. I read her story, uh, Permafrost, um, a few months ago and I loved it. Uh, apparently Eva is a poet and so, um, it may explain why her writing is so sparse and, um, effective. She loves the internal life. Um, the stories don't really have a plot. I don't need that, so I'm perfectly happy. It's really about the internal experience of her characters. And uh, this is a story of two women in a relationship for at least five years um, in Reykjavik when uh, Samsa decides that she'd like to have a baby. They go through the process. And it's, it's really just the um, experience of the relationship and then what happens when Samsa's pregnant and afterwards and boom, it ends in a very interesting way. So that's all I'll say about that. Very good experience though. I would read any other book that Baltazar puts out. The other, the other book I finished was another small book called The Bloater by Rosemary Tonks. Um, Tonks was a writer um, that wrote in, um, I'm going to say the 60s and 70s mostly, but then she disappeared for 40 years. There's an interesting article, um, if you look it up in The Guardian, about this. Um, this story is just a slice of life in the main character, uh, the main character's life, which is chaotic and crazy and funny. Uh, her name's Min. She's a BBC sound engineer. She's married, but I don't really understand that relationship. Uh, George is in the story, but not really a big part of the story as far as her friends and who she's interacting with. The dialogue is really the thing that makes this book. It's so wry and punchy and so well written between her and her friends. As the story goes on, Rosemary brings in more and more of these friends at her house. And that gets a little confusing and chaotic, but it's just a like a romp of a story. Just in and out, in her life, no real point um, other than it's just fun. Just a, a really great experience. It's a nice uh, vacation book or a palate cleanser between things. And then I am continuing with um, the, what is this called? The Chronicles of Barsetshire. Um trilogy maybe. Um, this is Barchester Towers. It's the second book in this, I'll call it trilogy. Um, I read The Warden, which will probably forever be my favorite trollop based on the little I know so far. Barchester Towers continues the story in Barchester where The Warden took place and um, it's mainly about the new bishop that's been appointed and it's not the person that uh, many people thought it would be, uh, which would, would have been the archdeacon, um, who was the son of the older bishop. Um, but no, it's uh, Dr. Uh, Prouty and his wife. The wife is definitely the character in this book. And so are the Stanhopes. <clears throat> is that what it's called? Is that, uh, I think it's the, it's the, um, the family called the Stanhopes. <laughs> And we've just, I've just uh, gotten through a scene, I'm on page 90, but I've just gotten through the scene of, um, yeah, Stanhope, of a um, party, a little party that the bishop and his wife are having to 
um, introduce themselves to the community. And um, this is where they meet some of, or at least one of the daughters of the Stanhopes. And um, her name is Signora, Signora Vicironi. Um, and boy, it's almost a slapstick scene. That's how funny um, it is. And um, so I'm, uh, I think I will always love the warden probably the best, but this one is definitely building um, in momentum and just hilarity. Um, and Trollope's narrator, the omniscient narrator, is so close to his reader. It's fantastic. I'm just, I'm just loving it, but I'm reading it slowly because I'm reading other books. So the book that I'm here to talk about is one that I just finished, which is Burnham Wood. Eleanor Catton um, has written a couple other books, and uh, one of them being The Luminaries, which is like a beast of a book. Did it win the Booker Prize? Uh, this is like 10 years ago. I think it's got like 800 pages. Um, a little bit about that later, but this is my first Eleanor Catton, and um, I was starting to listen to Kieran's review of this book a couple months ago on his channel, Katie Books. And I stopped though, because I, I knew I was going to be reading this book and I didn't want to go any further. And his reviews are always just engrossing and very thorough. And he's got such a wonderful way of um, expressing himself. So uh, I stopped and then I went back and just recently listened to it. And it was so funny because, all right, let, let me just go into what this is about. I'll do my best job. Um, so this takes place in New Zealand. Eleanor Catton is a Canadian, but she lives in New Zealand. And uh, Kieran called this eco-fiction, so I'm going with that. Um, it's about a guerrilla gardening group, a charity called Burnham Wood, that's run by Mira um, and her second-in-command, Shelley, who's been involved in the group for almost as long as the group has existed for five years. Um, this group feels like uh, there's so much unused land where crops could be uh, planted. And so they go about doing that, whether they have permission or not, um, along the roadside, in abandoned lots. Um, and they have their eye on a property. This is in Thorndike. Uh, they have their eye on a very large property that has just had a landslide happen on it. And they feel like there probably won't be that many people around. The roads have been cut off um, and they can start planting their crops there without anyone knowing. They take the crops and they give them to the community, people in need, and then they also um, use some of the crops themselves um, so they don't have to buy them. And um, but, but they're always strapped for cash. They've never been solvent. And um, the... Land is owned by a, a wealthy guy named Sir Owen Darvish. And it wasn't clear to me what he's doing with the land. So some of this book was a little confusing. It lost me in some areas, but I didn't really try hard to understand. I just kept going because it has such wonderful momentum. Um, he's selling the land. Mira knew that the land was for sale. And then it was taken off the market. And it was a mystery why that happened. But actually, Darvish was um, in conversations with an American billionaire named Robert Lemoyne to buy the property. And um, it was clear that Lemoyne really wanted this property. Lemoyne has made his wealth by having this aviation industry technology business, drones and such. And um, I think we're told in the book that he, I, I'm saying I think because um, it's a little confusing, but I think he's wanting the property to mine for rare earth minerals, but he's acting as if he wants the land to, as a um, place to go to when the earth uh, blows up from environmental problems, climate, um, climate change. So, um, Mira goes to the land and without anyone's permission, she starts staking it out. She runs into Lemoyne um, and it's um, apparent that there is some kind of connection, but they are at cross purposes. He is a super capitalist 
um, and she's running this nonprofit. He's never given, he's never been philanthropic, but he ends up offering to give her money. And he says it's okay for her to plant crops on the land. So that's interesting. She's excited. But then there's a lot of people in her group are, are saying like, why would he be okay with this? Why is he so eager to give you $100,000? So it's it's um, an interesting story about cross purposes, about two people on, I guess you could say different ends of the spectrum, um, politically even, and um, everybody's a little confused about what Lemoyne's purpose really is and can we trust him. And Lemoyne's an interesting guy and um, you can see that you wonder, um, you're not told, from the outside, how genuine he really is. So Catton doesn't reveal everything. Um, the characters are so well-developed in the story. Uh, the plotting is um, done really well, and the momentum builds as the, as the book goes on. This became a book that I didn't want to put down, and um, I ended up finishing it at lunchtime. And... Um, it's not a, a time of day that I normally would read. So, uh, but I, I really needed to finish the last 50 pages or so. And boy, was I surprised by what happens. Um, Kieran, it was so funny because as I was reading this book, I was explaining to someone that I felt like Robert Lemoyne was like a, um, an Elon Musk slash Richard uh, Branson type character. I say that because when, he was coming back to the property to visit, to meet some of the other people from Burnham Wood. And they were having this like kumbaya thing. Um, he brought this like acid that he was mega micro dosing. And so he's that kind of person. Um, that's why I, I, I felt like he was a combination of the two people. And um, Kieran called him a an Elon Musk type person. So I just had to laugh when I heard that. Um, this has really made me want to dig into the luminaries. I've actually downloaded the sample because I don't think I'm at a place where I'm going to read an 800 page book right now, but I think I might in the future. So really great. Uh, I never know with new releases how things are going to go, but I was pretty sure that this was going to be um, a good one because she hasn't written a book in 10 years. And because of the interview that I, that's right, I did, I did hear an interview of her, um, which I'll, I'll link down below. I think I did in my last uh, video that was so good. I think it's from, no, I didn't. It's from BBC Radio 4. Um, I do want to say that almost a little halfway through that interview, she kind of gives a spoiler so be aware of that. You might just want to listen to a little bit of the first half and then cut yourself off. It wasn't really like an out and out spoiler, but it gave me a clue as to what might be happening. I was still not clear though. So, so excited, so happy that I read that. And then the other things that I still have from my library hall, which I'm not sure about, um, are the guest lecture. I did start reading a couple pages of this, but I haven't really gotten anywhere yet. Very interior story about a woman lying in bed before a lecture that she's about to make. And then still uh, this, a system so magnificent it is blinding, which is a, um, a Booker International Prize long list. Um, contender. And now I know why there's this cute monkey on the front. Um, as this, as I'm just a little bit into the book, we're hearing the story of one of the twins who is, I think his name's Malcolm. Um, Sebastian, his name's Sebastian. Um, and he works in a lab and he's looking after this very unique monkey. So that's all I've, um, I've, as far as I've gotten, and uh, we'll see. I have some really enticing library holds to pick up, so I don't know yet how that, this is going to go. So that's all I had. Uh, please let me know um, if you've read Burnham Wood, and of course don't give any spoilers uh, in any comments, but I'm really interested to know um, how many of you are interested in reading Burnham Wood, or if you are. And also, if you've read um, any of the other two Eleanor Catton books, especially the Luminaries, I hope you have a wonderful week. 
I may um, not be able to wait and uh, I might be I might be sharing my library haul. I don't know yet, but I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for tuning in.